Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks. And I want to say real quick, I, I have invited a guest to be on the Media Speaks Saturday. Uh, that would not be this Saturday, but the one coming up August 9th. Um, we're going to have a very special person on. How many of you have heard about the uh, lady from uh, Liberia who unfortunately lost her husband? He was, I believe, on his way to this country, as a matter of fact, when he died. He was coming to see her and her, their, their family, his daughter's wife. Well, DeConti Kofa Sawyer is going to be on the Media Speaks on... Uh, the fun, like not this coming Saturday, first Saturday of August, going to go ahead and be a guest with us, and she's going to be talking about it. And it matters, people. It matters a lot. You want to know why? Because they're talking about quarantining people who have come in contact with someone who may have Ebola, because obviously you don't want Ebola in the country. At the same time, our government has been known to abuse disasters, and it makes you wonder if they would be quarantining people that don't need it for reasons that are nefarious. Well, I can't think of anybody who would be a, uh, a, a better spokesperson for how Ebola affects a family than her. She just lost her husband. And what we're going to do is uh, she's wanted to tell the story and warn others um, that concern Liberians against Ebola. And uh, we're going to welcome her as a guest on August the 9th. I also want to say where this show has come from. And don't worry, long-time viewers, I'll make it quick. I've gotten people questioning the name of the show. How many of you know The View? The View is never right. Never. Under any circumstances. Remember Rosie O'Donnell? It was like the wrong view. It was always the incorrect view. That is what the name on the show is a play on, is that show, is the correct views. Having said that, it does annoy me when I come up with something that I really, really, it's this obvious fact, and people will insist that it's my opinion. Um, such as uh, the Fukushima poisonings and things like that. I, somebody was with me in the hospital where we're visiting a loved one who has a urinary tract infection that will not go away, and they make you wear uh, uh, wraparound gowns and gloves. It's not completely with the, the, the cutoff with the sh shoes and all of that, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a mild quarantine, I guess you call it. You, you, you're restricted. You have to wear special gloves. Well, the person I'm with says I can't wear the gloves, they're latex. Now, I, everybody that listens to this show knows they don't use latex gloves in hospitals anymore. They're phasing it out of tattoo parlors and nursing homes and everywhere else as well because so many people have latex allergies and uh, so many employees have latex allergies, not just patients. That's why you're seeing more and more non-latex condoms hitting the market. Well, this person, rather than listen to the facts, walked into the room and did not wear gloves at all. Now, when they get a urinary tract infection, they will wish that they had not called the correct view an incorrect view. In other words, if I tell you something on this show, it is fact. I am giving you all of my sources. I'm telling you where I got it from. I'm letting you do more research on what I'm reporting on. And I put a lot of time and effort into this show. So if I tell you something, you can rest that it's true. I wouldn't spend this much time doing something that is a lie. TechDirt.com report says a backlash from NSA surveillance programs will cost private sector billions of dollars. How many of you have thought about this? All the spying, all of the, uh, the awful misgivings that our government has done towards us, as Edward Snowden has uh, heroically pointed out to us all. What about when it affects your dollar? How could that happen, you ask? The Open Technology Institute has put together a thorough paper detailing the many adverse effects of NSA disclosures have had, uh, both on American businesses inside and outside of the tech sector, as well as on Americans themselves. The Open Technology Institute is no stranger to the adverse side effects of the NSA's pervasive surveillance. Its own open source mesh network, Commotion, was accompanied by this warning prompted by the revelations of the Snowden leaks. 
cannot hide your commotion cannot hide your identity does not prevent monitoring of internet traffic does not provide strong security against monitoring on the mesh and can be jammed with radio data interface in other words uh, open technologies commotion uh, network was hacked by somebody letting you know that their um, network wasn't hack proof but it says how much were the NSA leaks cost the American businesses it's tough to say Although the OTI has done an incredible amount of research, it's difficult to pin down the exact losses. Any time an American company had its bid denied by a foreign country, the NSA's actions likely played a, some role, but this is very rarely stated explicitly. This leads to a rather open-ended estimate of lost sales. In other words, people are buying technology and things like it from other countries. Countries that are not known for spying on every single communication that is sent, like America has uh, taken to doing. And again, we wouldn't have been in this boat if we'd have voted for Ron Paul or Gary Johnson. I voted for both, primary and uh, Johnson president. Nearly 50% of worldwide cloud computing revenue comes from the United States, and the domestic market more than tripled in value from 08 to 14. Keep in mind the uh, crash happened in 08. Most sectors haven't recovered at all. This particular clouding platform has blossomed during this time. It's actually seen a boom. So what does uh, these policies do to one of the only booms we've currently had? Within weeks of the first revelation, reports began to emerge that American cloud computing companies like Dropbox and Amazon Web Services were losing business to overseas competitors. The NSA's prison program is predicted to cost the cloud computing industry about $22 to $180 billion over the next three years. People do not want American products because we spy. So we're going to lose a fortune there. We're going to have more of a brain drain. These, these are tech jobs that haven't been outsourced completely. These are the jobs that we want to keep here. Thanks, uh, NSA. It says uh, other direct effects are being felt as well. Germany is ending its long-running contract with Verizon. And German companies are specifically excluding American businesses when seeking bids. Can you blame them? Can you blame them? Um, we suspected that Angela Merkel was going to uh, change currencies to uh, do business in. So rather than approach her, we spied on her. She found out about it, and it's been done to people all throughout her cabinet. The blowback from the NSA spying on Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff cost Boeing $4.5 billion in contract in new jet fighters. It was given to Saab. You want more news? The European Parliament's new data protection law could easily result in the massive fine for U.S. companies. In March 2014, members of the European Parliament, as they should have, passed the Data Protection Regulation and Derivative Directive, excuse me, which imposes strict limitations on the handling of EU citizens' data. The rules which apply to the processing of EU citizens' data, no matter where it's located, require individuals to consent to having their personal data processed and retain the right to withdraw their consent once given. The fines could be 5% of revenues, which could translate into billions of dollars. In other words, the EU will be protecting its citizens from it. And if we do this spying over there, that's the kind of fine we're looking at. How about this? How about uh, the tech sector not being the only people that are getting hosed here? How about, according to April 2014 Harris Poll, nearly half of the 2,000 respondents, 47%, have changed their online behavior since the NSA leaks, paying closer attention not only to the sites that they visit, but also to what they say and do on the Internet. In particular, 26% indicated that they saw that they are now doing less online shopping and banking since learning about the extent of government surveillance. And it goes on and on and on. The article just lists time and time again how the U.S. is losing a fortune because companies, countries no longer trust our companies because we have become the opposite of everything that we were supposed to have been built upon. Look at the Fourth Amendment. How does that tie into any of this? And don't give me terrorism. You're more likely to die of a bee sting than you are terrorists. It's disgusting, friends. It absolutely is. 
Um, speaking of terrorism, though, uh, this is from Kurt Nemar, PrisonPlanet.com. Islamic State orders female genital mutilation in Mosul. And I said something the other day, and I'm going to go ahead, and I want comments on this. Now, if you're rude, I'm just going to ignore you. But I want comments on this, because I lean somewhat more towards Israel, not Zionism. The, Israel, the, the right for Israel to exist exactly where it is without being bombed or harassed in any way, shape, matter, or form. I'm in favor of that. The rest of Zionism is not something that I'm in favor of. The starting of wars, the uh, central banking, the New World Order joining, none of that. I'm just in favor of Israel's right to exist right where it is. To be clear, if you say I'm a Zionist, then you didn't listen to the show. I'm not even going to bother. But the reason is a lot of people give a pass to the sins of of the Jews in Israel slightly more than we give a pass to the same Islamists who do really terrible things. And I could tell you why. A lot of us don't want Sharia law. And if you look, and I'm not saying it has to necessarily be as bad as this story is, but I am saying this. We don't want to be Islamists. You don't see Jews beheading other people if they don't become Jews. Am I saying that the Jewish government is a good government? No, they're a terrible government. Am I saying Netanyahu is a wonderful person who should win man of the year? No. I am saying you don't hear him talking about trying to make everybody else Jews. You don't see that happening with uh, uh, um, Buddhists. When's the last time a Buddhist beheaded somebody because they wouldn't become Buddhist? You... Every, the, the, the more Islam grows in a country, in many instances, the worse living standards get for the people who are not Islamists. We don't want that in this country. And I'm not saying that the majority of Islamists are like this. But I am saying that these people tend to rise to the top. And we don't want Islamic leaders rising to the top who are like this, and there is more of a chance of that taking a foothold here and messing things up like it has in Spain. And let's not forget what the uh, many factions of Islam have done to the Arab people. The Arab people invented algebra. Now they've got a culture in many instances, whether they want it or not, obviously most of them don't want it. They have a culture that is trying to send them back a thousand years. You don't see that in most of the Jews. And that is why I think most people listening to this that have a certain sympathy for the Jews, I think it doesn't have anything to do with the Holocaust. It's that when Jews get a country, they don't start beheading people that don't want to be. And I know that you've got like uh, other um, the Emirates. They're not like that. But Saudi Arabia is. Um, parts of Pakistan are like, we don't want that here. Do you see what a lot of the Islamic factions have done to Spain? If you haven't, I'll tell you quickly, they've ruined it. The average Islamist ruined it? No. But the people that have come to power in Islam have destroyed Spain. We don't want that. And we don't want this. According to the United Nations, the Islamic State, formerly ISIS, has ordered all women between the ages of 11 and 46 to undergo female genital mutilation. Does, do I think that everyone wants that? No. Obviously, the poor girls it's being done to don't want it. Chances are her family, unless they're nutcases, don't want it done. It's not the Islamists we fear. It's the people that always end up leading them. People keep telling me that the average Gazan hates Hamas. That's why. My last story, people don't want to buy American products because Americans spy. Not all Americans. I don't spy on anyone. But the people that rise to the top tend to spy. It's the same thing. The people that rise to the top here tend to do things like this. And that is not what we want happening. It is estimated that 4 million women will be affected. This is something that very few very that this is something very new for Iraq particularly in this area 
and it is of grave concern, grave concern and does need to be addressed, said Jacqueline Badcock, the UN humanitarian coordinator in Iraq. And again, America has not made this a better place by getting involved. This is not the will of the Iraqi people or the women of Iraq in these vulnerable areas covered by the terrorists, she added. Stop. What if that was America? This is not the will of the American people or the women of America in these vulnerable areas covered by the terrorists. We don't want it here. That's why we don't trust Islam. It's not the average Islamist listening to this. It is the very small percentage that always seems to get in charge. According to the blogger Fadi Al-Qaeda, the order is dated July 11th. He posted the following fatwa containing the IS logo. Um, female genital mutilation or circumcision became associated to Islam due to the focus on female chastity and modesty. Yeah, just to destroy her ability to have sex and mutilate her body in her private area. It is mentioned in a number of hadith or sayings attributed to Muhammad, and while not practiced in Mecca or Medina, the two holy cities of Islam, it is prevalent and considered a religious requirement in Eritrea, Egypt, Guinea, Mali, and Mauritania. So if it happens in all of those places, maybe that's what we are worried is going to happen here. The average Islamist is as angry about it as I am. Just like I'm angry that America is represented by Obama. Just like I don't blame them for not wanting our computers, I don't blame people for not wanting Islam. Dailycaller.com Australian carbon tax cuts, cripples, cap, and trade across the planet. This is wonderful news. Absolutely freaking wonderful news. First of all, man-made global warming is a lie. It's not happening. Look up climategate.com, among many other links that you'll find from there. Cap and trade is going to destroy the energy industry in a sector in any, in any country that it goes into. You, you won't be able to drive as far. Your house will not be as hot or cold as you like it. Everything comes to a halt for the sake of the lie that is man-made global warming when a country adapt, adopts cap and trade. Adapt, adopts cap and trade. If you hear that your nation is going to do that, be prepared to be hosed. Well, Australia has wisely, thank God, come to its senses. And I hope a lot of other countries find the cojones to do this as well. Australia's repeal of its carbon tax last week has gotten other countries thinking about ditching their own carbon dioxide emission reduction schemes, which is good. Um, that by, I don't mean we should go nuclear. Um, obviously, there are uh, problems health-wise, not warming the planet, but health-wise with carbon dioxide. Um, Christel smokes like a chimney. I've seen chimneys smoke less in places with no heat in the dead of winter. But carbon dioxide emissions are not as bad for you as nuclear emissions. Until we are able to get on the footing that we can abandon carbon dioxide, which would be healthier, we don't need to make up lies about man warming the planet by using carbon because it's not happening. And again, we're seeing explosions here in the uh, alternative energy market. They're running out of silver because of all of the uh, panels that are needing to be built, solar panels, coming up in the next 10 years. It's astronomical. Um, to make a long story short, buy silver. On the heels of Aussie carbon tax defeat, South Korea's finance minister, Choi Kyung Kwan, called his country's planned cap-and-trade system flawed in many ways and hinted that he would pressure the government to delay the plan until 2015. Uh, how about uh, 3015? Businesses say the cap-and-trade system could cost them up to $28.9 billion in three years unless the program is delayed until 2020. That sounds like a good reason to get rid of it altogether. Um, Reuters reports that South Korea's emissions trading program has already been delayed twice since 2013. That's because they don't want to be broke. The system would have capped emissions from 400 top emitters in the country, potentially making it the world's second largest cap and trade system. For people that think I only attack Islam because they set the Arabs back, the leaders of Islam. We got boneheads in this country trying to set us back. 
America has oil that we don't drill for. We put these ridiculous cap and trade things into motion all over the free world during our through our push in the United Nations. For what? To go back a hundred years? This is stupid. While the government remain optimistic about the system, Reuters notes that some analysts have warned that the market's emissions cap will be too low and have forecast that the South Korean carbon price could rocket to $98, which is the penalty firms have to pay per ton if they don't meet the targets. Targets set up for a lie, people, to destroy economies and make more money for the people that have invested in the collapse of the country. Australia's conservative government has finally, was finally able to pass legislation aimed at repealing the country's two-year-old carbon tax last week. It was hailed as a victory, which it was, by carbon tax opponents who are intelligent, that's a correct view, citing the huge cost it imposed on families and the economy. U.S. politicians took note of the repeal as well, thank God. Republican lawmakers said the Australian experience should serve as a warning to the Obama administration which has recently introduced regulations aimed at lowering, lowering carbon dioxide emissions, thank God. And you don't need to be Republican for this. Libertarians mostly are also on the same side of logic here. Friends, the Seacrest Motel is a wonderful place to stay at if you're in Sandusky. Um, Cedar Point season is in full bloom. They got the water park open. The lake is beautiful. And guess what? If you stay at the Breakers, which is the hotel that's up there, you're going to spend anywhere between $200 to $150 to $600 a night. Or you can go to the Seacrest Motel, get it for a fraction of the cost. A fraction. I was giving prices on the earlier uh, advertisements. Well, guess what? I hope you took advantage of them. But guess what? I promise you something else, too. You're going to find that the price you get from the Seacrest Motel way less than anything else, not your budget, a budget in my foot, doesn't come close. So tell Vicky TMS sent you, Sam from The Correct Views. Also, Mike McLaughlin, you'll find him on Facebook, you'll find him writing amazing stories, great poetry, and uh, I always say, if you're listening to this show, you probably read, so you might as well read the best, and that would be Mike McLaughlin. A few more things to zip through. Show going a little bit long, but since Google sucks and wouldn't let me go live on HD, I might I, on uh, low D, I might as well just run with it here on my high def. Hate Google. Rutherford Institute: The Stealing of America by the Cops, the Courts, and the Corporations in Congress. Call it what you will: taxes, penalties, fees, fines, regulations, tariffs, tickets, permits, surcharges, tolls, asset forfeitures, foreclosures, etc. The only word that truly describes the constant dorking of the American taxpayer by the government as the corporate partners is theft. We are being taxed and fined to death. It's the way that they are stealing from us. Okay? Listen to this. $4.2 billion for militarized police. Almost 13,000 agencies, and we're not supposed to have a standing army in this country, according to the Constitution, so they just changed the name of the army, much like Hitler had the SS. Um, almost all thir almost 13,000 agencies in all 50 states and four U.S. territories participate in a military recycling program, which allows the Department of Defense to transfer surplus military hardware to local and state police, which is militarizing the police, which is exactly like a standing army, it just has another name. In 2012 alone, 546 million worth of military equipment was distributed to law enforcement agencies throughout the country. 34 billion for police departments to add to their arsenals of weapons and equipment. Since the great President Obama took office, police departments across the country have received tens of thousands of machine guns, nearly 200,000 ammunition magazines, thousands of pieces of camouflage and night vision equipment. You might say that it's because of the gangs. The gangs are in neighborhoods. Do you want the police shooting 200,000 ammunition magazines in a neighborhood no matter how bad the gangs are? See, it doesn't add up. When you we people say, it's because of the gangs. Have you seen the way the gangs are armed? Think, people. Think. Thousands of pieces of camouflage, night vision equipment, hundreds of silencers, armored cars, and aircraft. 
First taxpayers are first to pay millions of dollars for equipment which the Defense Department purchases from mega corporations only to abandon after a few years. Then taxpayers find themselves footing the bill to maintain the cost of the equipment once it's been acquired by the police. Double taxation is not legal, though. Six billion in assets seized from the federal government in one year alone. Relying on the topsy-turvy legal theory that one's property cannot be guilty of a crime, but is also guilty until proven innocent, government agencies have eagerly cashed in on civil asset forfeiture revenue schemes, which allow police to seize private property that they suspect may be connected with criminal activity. Then, whether or not any crime is actually proven to have taken place, the cops still keep the citizens' property. 80% of these asset forfeiture cases result in no charge against the property owner. Some states are actually considering expanding the use of asset forfeiture laws to include petty misdemeanors. This would be a speeding ticket. This would mean that property could be seized in cases such as minor crimes of harassment, possessions of small amounts of marijuana, and trespassing in a public park after dark. This is ridiculous. Um, again, 80% of the people win their case and still lose their land. How does that happen? What, you can drive uh, out of uh, where it's legal to have marijuana and actually drive into another a state where it's not and lose your land over the mistake, right? So we're condemning Mexico for putting you in jail for accidentally crossing the border with a gun. If we do the same thing here, we can't condemn them. Both are wrong. 11,000 per hour for the SWAT team to raid on government dissidents. The raid was carried out against Terry Porter, a Maryland resident who runs a welding business and is married with three kids, is outspoken about his views of the government, and has been labeled a prepper because he is an underground bunker in food supplies in case things turn apocalyptic. 150 Maryland police, FBI, and state marshals, barn squad, and county SWAT teams complete with helicopters, Bearcats, special response vehicles, mobile command posts, snipers, police dogs, bomb disposal trucks, sniffing robots, an excavator, and food trucks for a man who built a legal bunker on his own property. I'm going to zip through these because this show is going long. $3.8 billion requested by Obama administration to send more immigration judges to the southern border, build additional detention camps, and add border patrol agents instead of just sending them home. $61 billion for the Department of Homeland Security, one of the most notoriously bloated government agencies ever created. $80 billion spent on incarceration by state and federal government in 2010. Um, we're spending $48 billion. 80, excuse me, $80 billion on incarceration. Much of these people are not even violent offenders. But again, it says what happens here is, um, let's take this. Corrections Corps of America and GEO Group, the leaders of the partnership corrections industry. What they do is they tell the state that they don't have to pay for the prisons. They'll move the, private, the prisons in, they're privately owned, but the state has to promise to keep 90% um, occupancy. Well, how do you keep 90% occupancy if you don't have enough people that deserve to be in jail? You put them in jail in prison for anything just to generate the money. And then you can make more money by giving the jobs to the prison people to make things like the uniforms for the military, of which prison labor makes all of it. Yeah, don't let more. That's why more people aren't out of jail, by the way. $6.4 billion a year on the Bureau of Prisons and $30,000 a year thirty thousand dollars a year to house one inmate, each inmate. One person in prison for life was merely a go-between for an undercover officer buying $10 worth of weed. He got a life sentence for a dime bag. Why? Because of the above-mentioned privatization of the prisons. Ninety-three cents an hour for forced prison labor and service for profit corporations such as Starbucks, Microsoft, Walmart, and Victoria's Secret. Listen to this. Don't shop in any of those scum places. What this forced labor scheme has created, indirectly or not, is a financial incentive for both the corporations and government agencies to keep the prisons full to capacity. A good portion of the two million prisoners in public facilities are forced to work for corporations making products on the cheap that you don't get to make. You don't get this job. Undermining free laborers and increasing the bottom line for many of America's most popular brands. Um, 
Prison labor produces 100% of the military helmets, shirts, pants, tents, bags, canteens, and a variety of other equipment. <clears throat> Prison labor makes circuit boards for IBM, Texas Instruments, and Dell. On many McDonald's uniforms are sewn by inmates. Now, I understand that inmates need to have some skills when they get out, but you shouldn't have enough people in prison that you can get this much done. There aren't that many people that deserve to be in prison. There simply aren't. I'm not talking about your murderers and your rapists. Don't leave a stupid comment. 2.6 million pocketed by Pennsylvania judges who were paid to jail youth and then send them to private prison facilities. Many of that youth was marijuana, not violent. 1.4 billion per year reportedly launched to truancy by California school districts, which received government funding based on student attendance. 84.9 million collected in one year by the District of Columbia as a result of tickets issued by speeding and traffic light cameras, and most of them are wrong. How do you fight back that for that, by the way? Here's how you fight back. You get a, whole, you get a majority of people in any one state or even a major city to not renew your license, not pay any tickets, any tickets whatsoever, not, buy, not renew your plates, none of it, none of it. They're going to go after the worst people first, the three- and four-time DUI offenders, the, the people who really did something wrong. And the rest of you, they're not going to be able to put in jail, no matter how many th prisons they build. Because if you have a majority of, say, New York City refusing to do this, New York City can't lock up a majority of the driving cooks. Uh, well, New York might be a bad example because of the subway. Chicago, you can't lock up most of Chicago's cooks bartenders, doctors, lawyers, you get it. That's how you defeat it, people. I'm going to go ahead and zip through, through, through. The Daily Sheeple, China is headed towards a brutal collapse in the near future. I'm going to do this real quick. Um, it says, this week it was revealed that China, now the second largest economy on Earth, has a debt burden that is over 250% of its GDP. This is an explosive increase from 